Long Ligger Turtle here, and this is part two of how to build a half tank, above tank, basking platform for turtles. This platform fits my 18 inch wide, 75 gallon aquarium, and will fit similar sized tanks with that 18 inch width. In the last video, we built the floor, the walls, and the general framing of our basking platform. In this video, I'm gonna show you how we're gonna paint this, how we're gonna install our ramp, how we're gonna install our lighting, and of course, make it look this Grecian theme. Remember to check out the blueprints. I'm gonna leave them in the description that will give you sizes of every single little piece of wood in here, but always remember to take your own measurements of your own tank before you start a build like this. Things can be a little different. Trim sizes can be a little different, especially if you're using a different tank size. But other than that, let's get to it. the basking platform what we're gonna do is we're gonna paint different parts of it I purposely did not glue our walls to the platform itself because it's gonna make painting a lot easier so what we're gonna do is we're gonna paint all of the surfaces of the walls and a little support beams and basically anything that is wood and then second we are going to paint the basking platform itself again all around try to get inside that slit that we left for the basking ramp to slide into. Hindsight, I would actually paint the inside of this before I put it all together, but too late for that now, it'll be fine. I'll get as much paint in there as I can. So the third thing we're gonna paint is all these little pieces of wood that we cut that are gonna end up being the slide guides for our acrylic windows that we have on the side and front of our basking platform. And then lastly, I'm going to paint this shim that we're going to use in the slit of the basking dock. And then we're going to slide in a piece of acrylic in there and that's going to be a good wedge. But again, it's going to be right around the water so it needs protection from moisture. And that'll be it. I'm going to give it two coats of paint. I'm going to spray the bottom with a flex seal just to give it that extra layer of protection. Let's do it. All right, so you heard what the guy in the last video clip said. It's time to start painting. What I used was a Krylon Color Max acrylic latex satin white paint. This is a water-based paint, which is great for easy cleanup. And what makes this a good paint is it's used for indoor and outdoor purposes. This is going to be a very moist environment for this basking platform. So using this indoor outdoor kind of paint is gonna be what we're looking for. So I did two coats of this and just covered basically every surface you can see. I'm finishing up the painting here, and once all this paint dries, it's time to install our floor into our wall section. Now, if you remember the design of how this floor is gonna fit into your wall section, it's basically gonna recess on top of your four wall supports. Now you're gonna put a dab of glue on each of those wall supports, and then you're gonna put a line of glue around the side of your platform or your floor, because those are all surfaces that will be in contact with your wall. And don't forget to clean up any wood glue that seeps out of the joint you just created. The next thing I'm gonna do here is I'm going to take my finishing nails and I'm gonna put four into the floor and into those supports that are on the inside walls. So this just helps with clamping the wood down. Like I said previously, wood glue works best if it's being clamped well. And it's kind of hard to clamp the corners here without putting a lot of weights everywhere. So I just clamped doing it that way. But in the grand scheme of things, it's probably just an optional step using those finishing nails because this thing isn't gonna be seeing heavy loads throughout its life. Uh, so a really good clamp probably isn't totally necessary. Once you've glued your floor to your walls, it's time to install our little pieces of wood, which will make our little slot channels, if you wanna call them that, for our acrylic windows. Now, what I do is I take the smallest piece and I glue that onto the wall surface of our basking platform. And then I take the bigger one and glue that onto the small piece. And that's gonna create our little slot. These are both 
you're gonna do this four times. It's gonna be adjacent to our smaller window and adjacent to our bigger window, that front window. I uh, use the C-clamps here just because this is a pretty awkward joint and using weight or anything like that might be a little difficult. And zooming in a little bit just to give you a close-up of what we're working with here. You got your stack up, that's gonna make your little channels. You're gonna have a little glue that seeps out. Definitely be generous with the glue here just because it's kind of an awkward joint and just remember to clean it up. With those channels in place, you can now take the exact measurements you need for your acrylic window. You're gonna break your window so it fits in these little slots, so it needs to be pretty much exact. And now it's time to make our windows. What I use is an optics acrylic sheet. I'll leave that in the material list. But when it comes to breaking acrylic, it's relatively simple, but you have to make a kind of fixture for it. You basically need a clamp. I used a big board here and then my little C-clamps. Then you need to take a gouging tool. I actually have an acrylic gouging tool that I'll leave in the description. And you just go back and forth, back and forth, back and forth until you have a good gouge. And then you're gonna pull that back and forth until it snaps, like I showed in the video there. So it's gonna make a really loud noise when it snaps, but make sure you make a ton of gouges before you go for this, because acrylic sheets are kind of expensive and if you're not careful with the gouging, it can just break in a random direction. So just gouge it really, really well, do it way more than you think you need to, and your windows will look great. So because I planned ahead, I could make my two windows that we're gonna put on our basking platform from one sheet of acrylic. This will save you money, of course. Do it. Oh. With your window pieces sized, it's time to do a fit check. Will they fit? Yes, they will. Awesome, well done everyone. What's up, pup? Now it's time to focus on the ramp. Obviously a very important part of this basket platform so your turtle can get out of the water. What we're gonna use is our little shim piece and we're gonna use our 11 by 14 acrylic sheet. This is gonna be unmodified, bought as is, and we designed this to fit without any extra work here. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna take your shim piece and kinda of shimmy it in with your acrylic at the same time so that they're both evenly pressing up against each other inside of the slot of your floor piece. Uh, I used a hammer here just to tap everything in nicely. And then when, that, when you have those both in there, use the hammer to tap your acrylic to the length you want. Once you get that acrylic sheet to the location you want, so that it'll make a long enough ramp once you bend it, it's time to use our heat gun to make it so this acrylic actually bends. A great thing about acrylic is you can bend it, it's not glass, um, so all you have to do is heat it up. What I did here was I used a piece of wood so that I wouldn't be putting direct heat onto that painted area of the floor piece that's wood. Um, Instead, it's just gonna be on that scrap piece of wood and the acrylic right where we want it to bend. We want it to bend right at the intersection of that slot that you put it into. Um, so we're only gonna apply heat there. That way it only bends right there. So you want even heat back and forth. You don't wanna get too close or make it too hot. Otherwise it might start to bubble um, because it is overheating and it'll slowly start to bend and you'll notice that, but you can also push it with your finger just to give a little, little boost, make it go a little faster. But once you have it where you want it, uh, let it sit and maybe weigh it down if it's not staying. The next step I took was I took my vinyl tile that looks like marble and I sized it to fit on the top of our platform floor. Now you have those little side supports that you're gonna have to cut little notches out so it fits in there nicely. Based on the size of the vinyl tile I got, it took three pieces, one for the main floor and then two that kind of finished off on those little leg pieces. 
vinyl tile is really easy. You can just use scissors to cut it, which makes it really simple um, as opposed to a heavy tile. This stuff's light and it has an adhesive at the bottom which helps stick it right to that wood without adding anything extra. And then a quick detour from that vinyl tiling because I want to do the ramp next. I want to make sure I just painted everything that I needed to. So here I'm going to use a flex seal that uh, is basically just an uber waterproof paint. Definitely not a great thing to put directly into the water, but of course this basketball platform is going to be above the water. So I'm not too worried about this being a toxic paint for the turtle because it's not going to be in the water like I just said. So. So what I did was I basically just spray painted um, any surface that I thought was going to be bombarded with moisture. Uh, this is going to be right over the tank, so the bottom is definitely going to be seeing a lot of moisture. And then I picked up a little bit sides of the inside of that basking ramp area, um, just because I know that's going to be seeing a lot of water too. Now. This stuff comes out really fast, so do not waste it. Make sure you get the bottom first and then clean up the rest of the areas that you think will get moist after. This is not a cheap can of paint right here. Before we put the finishing touches on our ramp, I just wanted to make sure I prepped it correctly. The acrylic itself is pretty sharp without any sort of sanding on the edges. So I just did a light sand on the edges to give it a rounded sort of shape just because your turtle is gonna be swimming around this all the time. You're gonna be handling it and you don't want sharp edges existing. Uh, you can see I got a little paint on there, unfortunately. So I tried to sand off as much as I could, but that stuff was difficult to remove. With your ramp all prepped, it's time to cut your vinyl tile so that it covers the top surface of your ramp. This is what you're gonna be seeing. This is also what we're gonna be attaching some tiles to to make it easier for a turtle to climb. Once I got that vinyl tile cut that fits the ramp, it's a little bit stiff, so this next part's a little wonky, but I basically took the heat gun just to kind of soften up the vinyl tile a little bit and bend it to more uniformly match the curvature that's a little bit more gradual at the top of your basking platform. Next step is to install our little tiles that will be basically the mechanism for your turtle to be able to climb up this, what is right now, a slippery ramp. Uh, so I have all these little decorative tiles that I think are used for bathrooms or kitchens and they come in a little sheet that they're all glued together so you have to cut off that little piece of glue for each tile and then what I did was I basically laid them out where I thought they would look good and usable for the turtle and then I used a Gorilla Glue epoxy, uh, mixed that up and put a little dab on each tile and then put those where I wanted them on our vinyl tile that we previously sized for our ramp. All right, time to install our tiled vinyl tile. So I peeled off the back, that's a sticky adhesive, and then I'm applying a little more heat just to make it more flexible for that curved part again because it kind of went back to its original shape. And now what I'm doing here is I'm actually adding more Gorilla Epoxy to the corners and that top edge lip that's going to be in that curved portion. And I know the sticky part of the vinyl tile is going to help, but it's going to be in the water and I don't really trust that adhesive enough. So I'm going to put 
all of that Gorilla Glue epoxy on there as well to ensure that this vinyl tile never falls off the ramp and will be a permanent fixture and I won't have to worry about it ever again. You can see here I'm setting up quite a little contraption to make sure that I'm clamping this epoxy because like that wood glue, clamping the epoxy makes it a lot stronger and it'll just cure a lot better between those two surfaces. So do what you can, but I used a lot of C-clamps and wood pieces and held a little bit um, because it does dry pretty fast. So you can actually hold it yourself just to get that initial um, adhesion going. And voila, your ramp looks beautiful and it's permanently installed on there. The much easier installation of the vinyl tile that makes up your floor is up next. So what I did here was I peeled off that backing on the vinyl tile to expose the adhesive portion of our tile. And this will be adequate without extra glue for the floor of our basking platform. Now I'd say this next step is optional, but what I took was 100% silicone in a caulking gun, and I basically put a bead, a tiny bead of this silicone around the edge where that vinyl tile and wall exist. And why I did this was just because there's a little gap there because you can't make this a perfect fit. Um, so I don't want things getting in there that are hard to get out, and especially like moisture or something. And it just makes it so if the corners do ever peel up for some reason, this will help hold them down. Just make sure when you're laying that bead that it looks good. Um, so one thing I do is I lay it down and then I use my finger to basically make a nice little fillet. Next up is installing a fixture that will hold our little Exoterra lamp stand. Um, because the wall is only a quarter inch thick, a screw is going to most likely puncture through um, this wall if you try to just install the clip directly to your wall. So I added a double stack up of that quarter inch scrap wood that I had, um, and that will allow me to install screws into the wall without the potential of them sticking through into our basking area where your turtle is, and that would be a sharp object and it wouldn't look good. So I just use wood glue to install that little stack up of wood that I made. And I locate this a little bit offset just so that my lamp that is holding my mini deep dome is making it so the basking lamp itself, the heat lamp is located directly over the middle of my basking area. And then the UVB will be a little bit offset, but that'll be okay. I just want the brightest heat part right in the middle where my turtle will most likely be hanging out. And now it's time to focus on our theme. What I used was our Krylon Color Max paint and painted the plastic columns that are used for cakes. The plastic looks terrible and very fake, but once I painted it with this paint, it matched everything else and looked a little more uniform with the entire setup. And with all those columns painted, the next thing I did was just figured out where I wanted to locate the columns within our basking platform area. To make it look like the columns integrate naturally into this platform, I'm going to use that one and a half inch wide poplar board um, and just span it between our little supports there that I'm showing you and put it on top of our columns so that everything kind of looks like it fits as it should. Ooh, dominoes. I kind of jumble a lot of steps at once here, just because I want to do all my cutting in one step, but I measure out what those one and a half inch poplar boards need to be. And I also start to think about the outside pieces that are going to hold my external columns. So I'm going to have two pieces on each side of those windows that are going to have miter cuts. And those are going to go the entire span of the front and side wall. So. I have this little plastic fixture here that lets me do a 45 degree angle cut, otherwise known as a miter cut. And I basically measure it out and just make sure that it spans the entire length of our basking platform, front wall and side wall.
and this is what those cut pieces are going to look like. You're going to have four miter cut pieces of wood and those two little poplar board pieces that are going to go on the inside. Now I'm showing you what this is supposed to look like. You're actually going to glue those two miter pieces on top and bottom with your columns in between and around your window. You're not going to do it on the window. You're going to use that frame that you already have existing. And I show you here that I use silicone to glue in your column pieces and I used wood glue for those miter pieces to the wall itself. With the external portion of the Grecian theme complete, it's now time to focus on the inside. You can see that I changed up what I wanted to do with the columns a bit, um, trying to make up my mind what looks best, and I ended up finding this little Poseidon statue that I ended up making a little stand for and putting in that center side ball. Just like I did on the outside, I used silicone to glue those columns to our basking platform floor and to the top little span piece that we made. Now that our glue is dried for our little reinforcement on the side wall that we're going to install our lamp stand on, uh, I installed the little bracket that's going to hold the adjustable bar for our lamp stand. This just takes little screws and this is just a super strong way to install this. That little bracket has an adhesive, but I don't trust that at all and I don't have any protection over our basking area, so I'm using screws for this bracket. Next step here is to install our LED lighting on the bottom of our basking platform floor. What I'm doing right now is installing the controller for our waterproof LED strip lighting. This controller has a little remote sensor that sticks off of it with that little black thing, and it has the little cord that you're gonna snake around and plug into your LED strip lighting once you have that strip lighting down. Uh, this just takes two screws, and you can put it right into the back wall really easily without any issues. This is going to be a two-step how-to here because the first method I use that I'm about to show, um, I just used a singular strip of LED strip lighting and snaked it around so that it covered a lot of the bottom of the floor to really optimize your lighting. However, I think with all the bending and twisting, I might have ruined the waterproof aspect of our light, so it didn't work in the end and it broke after a couple days of being in that moisture. So I'm gonna show you a second method that is a little cleaner and worked out better for me. And I'm actually gonna have a third method that I think will be easier than both the two methods I'm gonna show you. But yeah, this method didn't really work out. So like I said before, the LED strip, the first try didn't work. LED strip stopped working. And I think it was because of that way that I installed it where I just had to make turns with big loops, and I think that ruined how it was waterproof when I was moving things around like that so roughly. So instead, I'm gonna use these L connectors. Now what this lets me do is 90 degree angles with individual strips of LED strip light. Why this is great is now I don't have to do those big loops that you saw me do before. Now I can cut little strips, make them go in straight lines, and connect them into this L clip. Now, it was a little tricky to figure this out at first, but you gotta slip a little X-Acto knife under the silicone that's over it, and uh, that silicone's there to be waterproof, and so you just gotta peel that back so you can get the terminals to fit the connectors on the L-clip and our LED strip light. It was a little tricky at first, but eventually it became pretty easy. Now I had to clean off and get rid of some of the gunk that got under there from the last time, gave it a little paint job real quick, and it was time to lay everything out. So like I said, uh, I did a bunch of 90 degree angles and U's. So before I made pretty much the same shape, but I had big loops instead. Uh, now I can get, do it nice and flat. So I laid it all out. And one thing to be really careful about here is when you do turn it on, make sure all the color of each strip is the same. Like right now, um, it wasn't 
because all the strip lights weren't perfectly connected, which was an easy fix. Just go through each strip light that's a different color, um, starting from where you, the first strip light, and then go along that little route there until all the strip lights are the same color and you'll be all set. And then what I did was I just covered this thing with silicone just like the process before, but with a lot more in those connector areas. It says it works for waterproof LED strip lights, but that doesn't really make sense to me because there's no waterproofing mechanism in these clips. So I just covered silicone all over it to manually waterproof these and really hoping it works out this way. So that's it. That's our new layout. It's a little bit cleaner looking, as you can see, yeah, there's a lot of silicone, but now it's in nice straight lines and looks great. All right, so like I mentioned in the beginning of this light install, there is a third method that I highly recommend because my first method didn't work because I had to put those loops in and it became no longer waterproof. The second method had little L clips, so it solved my problem of having big bends. However, I had to cover the whole thing with silicone and there's still a risk that I might have missed something and moisture could get in there and ruin the light. Not the greatest method either, it was a little messy. So I realized the reason that those methods didn't really work out was because I was trying to save money. And in the end, I ended up spending a decent amount of money because I needed two strip lights and those L-clips. Uh, but I was trying to spend around 15 to $20 for these lights. If you upgrade a little bit and you spend 40 bucks, you can basically get that second method I used, but with everything you need so you do not need to silicone it the way I did. As you can see in the picture, you get pre-cut lights with little connectors at the end already installed, and you get these little wires that you can just bend around easily so you don't have to deal with any sort of clipping, you don't have to deal with any cutting, any gluing, it's all gonna be done there for you, and it works on your phone. I don't know who needs this to work on in a phone, but It'll be really cool to surprise your friends when you give your turtle an immediate light show and they're right next to it. So I highly recommend this product. No, I did not use it for this install, but I think it'll work a lot better than my first two methods because it's a lot less prone to just error on the installation. So I hope that light install made sense and I hope it works out for anyone who tries this. Uh, that is the last step to this Basky platform and now it's just time to install it. And that is it, the Grecian half tank, above tank, basking platform for your turtle is now complete. Well done, my fellow turtle lover and DIYers. Thank you so much for sticking through it. I really hope it went well for you or it gave you awesome ideas for your own designs. If you like this design, hit that like button for me. If you wanna see more videos in the future of DIY projects and just general turtle information, hit that subscribe button for me. Turtles live a long life and we wanna give them a great life. This is an awesome turtle miner community. Please leave comments or suggestions on things I could do with a new basking platform, maybe new ideas that you wanna see, or just comments in general on the setup. Thanks for watching and long live your turtle!